Welcome to Noob Aquatics. This is Matthew. Thanks for coming back to our channel. And again, if you have not subscribed, make sure you uh, subscribe below, like the channel so that we get kicked up there at the top so other people can find this channel. We are all about, uh, you know, the beginner aquarist. Uh, everything we do here is for people that have small uh, systems within their house, maybe one tank up to 10 tanks, but nothing elaborate. No auto water change systems or anything where, you know, no auto TDS, no massive systems in your house, just small beginner stuff. So if you are that type of person, then you come to the right channel. Today we're going to show you what you do when you bring fish home from the fish store. Problem is, is a lot of times people will bring fish home, they'll throw them directly into the tank and the fish will die and they won't know why. They're like, okay, well they think it's the pet store or they will float the bag in the tank and uh, you know, and then they'll dump the water and the fish into the fish tank. Again, another bad thing. Unless you trust the other water 100%, don't dump that in your tank. So today we're gonna show you exactly what to do when you bring fish home from a pet store, fish store, your local fish store, wherever you get them at, and you want to introduce them into your new aquarium. So this is what you do. All right, so over in this corner over here, you will see that we have our quarantine tank set up. It sits on the igloo because it's always a temporary, uh, you know, setup. But as you can see, it's really dark over in this corner. There's no lights. The reason is, is because you want to make sure the fish are not stressed at all. So our quarantine tank, uh, the only light that it gets is from our kitchen table area. And that light comes on maybe two or three times a day. There's no plants in there. The quarantine tank you set up, you can set it up at five to 10 gallons. Either one is fine. Um, and if you uh, want to set up a quarantine tank, um, I believe I have a video uh, that uh, uh, we've, I believe I have a video, so I'll put that link somewhere up here in the, up in the corner, whichever side it's on. And uh, you can take a look at that on quarantining your fish. But the main thing here is you want to float them. So yes, so that is the first thing that you do. You want to make sure the aquarium temperature is up to temperature. So this water is 70 eight degrees, it's a uh, RODI water with uh, CCAM equilibrium and uh, alkaline buffer in there with a little bit of calcium in there because we just like a little extra calcium in our water. So that's what's in here, RODI and remineralized. And it's a pH of about a 7.2. So now you'll see on the bottom, that is an adjustable heater. The reason you have that there is because you wanna make sure you can turn the temperature up or down if necessary, most likely up because a lot of these fish diseases that you bring home will, uh, you know, uh, you know, take a little while to get active. So you want to make sure you have it around 80 degrees, um, it's, which is where most fish can handle it. There are some that can't, but keep it around 80 degrees so that you can, when you medicate them in here, everything goes good. But the main thing here is about acclimating your fish. So right here on these fish, these fish have been sitting in this water for about 15 minutes. That is what you want to do. Now the next stage is because we know this comes from uh, our, our tap water here in Ohio or RODI water, which is what the fish store uses. I'm not too worried about the water quality in there, but I am not going to dump that water into my quarantine tank. And I'll show you what to do to uh, get the fish out and get them into the aquarium. Oh. Turn it right away. All right, so over here we have another acclimation station set up. On this station here, you'll see it has a cup. This is to pull water out of the, the main tank. And this right here is my homemade drip acclimator. If you'd like to see a video of this being made, let me know uh, in the comments below and I'll show you how to make one of these. It's very, very simple. It takes only like maybe six minutes at the most. All right, and then my little bucket here. Now, this right here is to catch the water. What I'm going to put in here is shrimp. So shrimp need to be drip acclimated no matter what, where you buy them from. The reason is, is because if they don't molt properly whenever you put them in the tank, then that can cause a problem. So I'm going to show you what you do with fish you, or with shrimp you get from the pet store, all right, that you need to drip acclimate as well. So let's take a look at those. So we have six giant Amano shrimp in there and then a stowaway fish. That fish is going to go in the quarantine tank over there, but the main thing here is the shrimp. All right. What I do is whenever you have shrimp, you want to get the rubber band off. 
I find that unless you're saving those rubber bands, which most of them that are being used like that tightly, you probably don't want to save. You want to clip the rubber band in one spot and it'll pop right off. Now, a lot of people will say just pour it into a net over a bucket. Well, I've learned that that is not the best way to do it. So you're going to pour the shrimp and fish directly into a, another container here. All right, if they don't jump out. All right, because that is always a possibility. Okay, so now they're in there. That's our shrimp. We'll make sure they're all there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six shrimp, and then I got to get that fish out. This fish is going in the quarantine tank, so this is a neon blue rasbora that kind of just a stowaway oh my goodness so i got to get him out of there and throw and not really throw him but place him into the quarantine tank now what you do is uh when you take them out you want to put your hand under make sure that they feel comfortable and warm and instead of just plopping them in there you want to try to let them leave on their own so you're going to put it in there and just kind of get them to leave on their own. You can tap the other side if I can get it in there and then there he goes. All right now with the shrimp. These shrimp are going to be separated into two different tanks so I'm going to pull half of the water from here and half of the water from here and I'm going to start drip acclimating so the way to get mixed to both. And then I'll replace the water I pulled later with RODI water. Alright, so that's the drip acclimator. Okay, so if you see, you want to have about two drops for every second. It should take roughly about about uh, 30 minutes to an hour uh, depending on thing and you want to do that twice so you want to fill this up twice and drip it in there so that it doubles the capacity of the water and then once you do that wait a few minutes um, to get let them get settled and then you're going to move them into the tank so that's how you acclimate shrimp that is the recommended way don't do the drop and plop don't do the float and release because shrimp are a little more sensitive to fluctuations so uh, But yeah, drip acclimating shrimp is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's poop in it too. Giant turds. Okay, so like I said, it's really dark over here, and that's to reduce stress on the fish. Um, and you want to do that. So you want to turn your lights off. If you have lights, turn your ambient lighting off, that type of thing. And that makes them feel a little more comfortable before you, you know, drop them in the tank. So now with fish, all right, fish are a little different. Since we are going to medicate these fish over here, shrimp are, yeah, shrimp are in their own category over there, and those are a, a mono shrimp. Medicating shrimp is just pointless. Um, you can give them a salt dip, but medicating them is pointless. So we're just gonna, uh, after we drip acclimate the shrimp, those are going straight into the, the normal into the uh, aquariums. Now these right here, because fish carry diseases that can be transferred over to other diseases, you want to always quarantine your fish. We do a two month quarantine. Um, and if you'd like, um, I can kind of go over that onto the steps that you would take. So if you'd like to see a video of what steps you take to quarantine your fish from start to finish for the full two months to ensure that they're safe and happy before you put them in your uh, aquarium, make sure you put that in the comments below and I'll try to make a video for that as well. So now you're going to pour the water into a bucket. Now we have a five gallon bucket. It doesn't have to be that big, it can be smaller. Um, I recommend smaller. Um, and then when they're in the tank, you can use a flashlight, one that dulls. I don't know if you see here. You can dull it down so it's not very bright. All right. And you're doing that. And I'm going to have to put the thing on there. But you're doing that because you don't want to pour, you don't want to put a net there and then pour the water over top of the fish because that can be damaging to the fish's scales. To the fish's gills that time of thing and be really stressful because they just have you know tons of water just hitting them in the face like they just fell down a waterfall so you want to try to avoid that 
and scoop them out of the water easily and softly. So, so we're going to start with the Siamese algae eaters first. So you're just going to take this right here, cut the rubber band. Okay. Not do it in there because I don't want rubber band to fall in there. Okay. I keep saying K, 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 all right, I'm going to remove that because that sounds really bad. Okay, okay. All right, so get the rubber band off, and now you're going to get it down close to the water here, and you're just going to, or close to the bottom here, and then you're just going to dump them in there and get all three of your fish, or four, or five, or however many you have, into the bucket. All right, so you're doing it easily so that you're not stressing them out or causing any more pain by splashing water over them constantly so now that we have them in there as you can see it's pretty hard to see them that's what you're going to use the light for now these guys are scared of light so I can try to use that to my advantage see there's one and he came out on his own pretty quickly all right we're gonna find number two so like I said Try to use the light scaring technique. See, went in there just fine. And you're gonna put them in the water and they will normally come out on their own. And let's get the last one. This one doesn't seem to care about the light, does he? Okay, we got this one here. All right, so you got those in there. Now I would say if they come, if your fish come from different sources, you can't dump the water in there to get them out. But if you want to make it super easy, then every time you dump a bag, you want to get rid of the water. Why? Because you don't want like five gallons of water in here to give the fish plenty of space to swim around, which makes it impossible to catch them with a net. So I'm going to go dump this water, come back, and then we'll do the next, next few bags. Now these fish, they all come from the same uh, fish store. So because of that, and I'll do the quarries last. So the next one will be the pencil fish that we have here. These are some uh, marginatus uh, pencil fish or otherwise known as the dwarf pencil fish. These are, we use these as a fish. We use them as dither fish. So if you know what dither fish are, it's just another fish in the aquarium to make uncomfortable fish, you know, a little bit more comfortable, shy fish, more comfortable to come out. So we like that. We don't want our aquariums just to be empty and uh, and alive. We don't want them to be dead. We want them to be alive so we can see them. Even our, uh, you know, breeding tanks. So you want to make sure you put stuff in there that can't eat the eggs, of course, or the little baby fish, that type of thing. So we've had luck with pencil fish, and that's what we're going to stick with. These are the dwarf ones with even smaller mouths. So. They will eat shrimp, yes. Yes, they will. We found that out. They won't eat the big shrimp, but they sure will eat the, the small ones. Every one of them. They will even hunt them down. It's pretty crazy. All right, so we got the pencil fish in there. Make sure none are in the bag. You don't want to leave one in the bag, because if you leave one in the bag, that one's definitely not going to survive. With quarantine, they won't get medicated today. You'll give them a day to get used to their area, which is their quarantine tank. 
And then the next day, that's when you'll start the medication treatment. Now, let's do the, whose are these? These are the Julie Corys. So now we got them in there. I'm going to go get the pre-cycled media that we have. All right. I'm going to put that in here. And even though I use pre-cycled media, I'm still going to add in CKIM uh, stability in there for the seven days. That's just because that's how I am. I'm paranoid, I guess. But yeah. So that's how you do fish from your local fish store. And... Uh, it's basically the plop and drop method, but the only difference is you're not pouring them into a net and then pouring all of that water over top of their bodies, which can also increase, uh, you know, stress on the fish. The quarantine process, again, like I said, I'll make a video for that if you'd like, uh, so that you can see the whole uh, two month process. But yeah, so that's how you add fish uh, that you buy. That's how you acclimate them. You do somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes for temperature acclimation. Once they've reached that temperature acclimation, that's when you're going to do what we just did there, which is pour them into a container and then scoop them out with a net instead of pouring them into the net. We're only about halfway there. You can see the drip kind of slowed down, so we're gonna speed that drip up a little bit. One hour later. So the uh, shrimp have went through two full things of water on here. They've been fully drip acclimated. Now we need to get them out of here and into their respective tanks. So first things first, we're going to get three out and they're gonna go on the top up here. All right, so just know you just know that a mono shrimp they like to jump.
So yeah, so when you're done with your uh, nets from the store, when you pull the fish out, you want to make sure you disinfect your nets and anything else, the water from the local fish store or the pet store. Make sure that you disinfect those so that you don't introduce by cross-contamination any type of sickness into any of your other aquariums. Stay tuned. All right, so yeah, so now we finished acclimating our fish that we just got and we finished acclimating the shrimp. So let's kind of summarize what we did here. So for our shrimp, we did a drip acclimation that, that took roughly about an hour for the water to fully drip into uh, the container. Once they were in the container, uh, you know, for that long, then we let them sit for a little while and then we pulled them out and put them directly into the aquariums. But yeah, so we put them into the aquariums and then, uh, so yeah, so the reason you want to drip acclimate shrimp, like I said, is because of their molting process. What I've learned is that if you do the plop and drop method, which is acclimating, temperature acclimating them by floating the bag for 15 to 30 minutes and then just pulling them straight out and throwing them into the aquarium, it, they have a tendency to die because they have problems molting because of that it, it causes some kind of shock to the shrimp that prevents them from molting and the molt will get stuck to their body and kill them. Um, it's the, the ring of death is what people call it. It's when there's a white ring around the midsection of the body and what it is is it's the molt just will not come off and they eventually they'll die. We've had we've seen that happen with a lot of ghost shrimp and we've seen that happen with uh, Neocaridina shrimp. So yeah, so we recommend with all shrimp and uh, you know to always do the, the drip method. Now, we here at Noob Aquatics do not quarantine shrimp. We don't quarantine snails either. Those are the two things that we just don't uh, quarantine here, mainly because we've never had any problems with shrimp or snails going into our tanks. Uh, if we've noticed anything with our shrimp, uh, then we will pull them out and do a salt bath dip with our shrimp. It's just temporarily temporary and then put them back into the aquarium. Some things you might need to worry about with shrimp is planaria and a uh, visceral whatever. I can't remember what the name it is, but it's a bacteria parasitic thing that, uh, you know, forms on their face. It looks like a white fuzz all over their face, that type of thing. Um, Versa mila or something. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but it starts with a V. Um, but yeah, if you see that, then a uh, salt dip for, you know, just a few minutes, you know, whatever they can handle. And again, it's it's different. We we did it for what? What was the salt dip? How long did we do that for? Thirty seconds. Yep. Yeah. So we did a salt dip. We we made a salt concentration to a certain level, and then we dipped them in there for like thirty seconds or so. Pulled it out. Um, monitor monitored those shrimp for a few days, and then if they still showed, then we did one more salt dip. And then normally after the second salt dip that uh, you know fungus looking stuff or whatever on the face of the shrimp normally goes away. Planaria is a different story. A planaria you'll have to get a planaria trap and uh, you know catch those planaria and get them out of your tank or buy some fish that eat it. So some fish I've known that eat them are those uh, pseudo pseudomugal uh, rainbow fish. They tend to hunt them down and eat them but just know that they'll also eat your baby shrimp as well. So but yeah so we don't quarantine our shrimp and our snails. That's just one thing that we just don't do here. But now, so for fish, there is several methods uh, for acclimating your fish. We recommend doing a temp temperature acclimation like we showed here um, in our video. So you're going to temperature acclimate the bags for 15 to 30 minutes. If they come from our local fish uh, store, we do them for about 15 minutes since it's a short drive. If they come from the mail, so we, do, we get a lot of fish delivered in here, we will temperature acclimate them for about 30 minutes just to ensure that the temperature gets back to the temperature of our water. And then uh, once we do that, then we pour them into a second container very easily so that the water doesn't flow over their bodies. And then we scoop them out of there with a net or pull them out of there with our hand. We've done both. And... Uh, the main reason we do that is because there's less stress onto the fish and you want to make sure that you dim all the ambient lighting in there and uh, and the lighting in the tank and keep it that way for at least 24 to 48 hours before you start medicating. Well, that's what we do here. So, so yeah, so that's the two methods that we choose to use here at Noob Aquatics. Um, we do the drop and plop after proper temperature acclimation um, for almost all of our fish. Assuming that they, you know, come from a local fish store. 
So when we get them in the mail, uh, there's an additional step that we take. So when we get them, we will temperature acclimate them for the 30 minutes. And as soon as we open the bag, we don't want them to be exposed to that ammonia for a very long time. Uh, that, you know, is going to form the pH shift that's going to form in there, that type of thing. So we will drop, we'll have a, a you know, little oral syringe ready and drop two drops of Secam Prime in there. Pour that water into another pail or bucket and then we'll scoop them out of the water so that we can avoid any toxic chemicals on the fish's body as possible. At least that's what we do. Does it help? Well, we've seen less deaths when we've started doing it that way, so we we believe it does help. But yeah, so that's how we acclimate our fish here at New Aquatics, and we hope that you actually acclimate the same way um, because we don't want you to just go straight to the fish store, buy some fish, open the bag, pull them out, and then put them directly into the tank or even pour that water from the fish store directly into your tank. The main thing is just get the fish by themselves into your tank after they've gotten to the proper temperature and then of shrimp you want to drip acclimate so we've helped you out here at the noob aquatics to learn how to acclimate your new fish that you just bought because you went crazy like me you know going to the pet store on a discount day and come home with 30 new fish then thanks for coming to our channel and enjoy we hope you subscribe and like and you have a wonderful day